Mr. Perrow, at what time are we to be finished loading? We'll be lucky if we finish before sundown, Captain. Well, of course we will be finished. We are moving according to plan. You seem to be worried, Mr. Perrow. I am. Why? I don't like the idea of taking passengers with us. It's too much of a risk to take. If I cancel their passage, questions would be asked. Questions I am afraid I could not answer satisfactorily. It would be a bigger risk not to take them. And you do not worry about taking risks, Mr. Perro. No, no. But I still think it's a big mistake to leave Clegg behind. We have a radio man. We have no need for two. Besides, I do not think that Clegg would like going with us. Where is he? Checking the cabins. Ah. Arrangements have been made for Mr. Clegg. I can promise you he will cause us no trouble. Disappoint me, Mr. Clegg. I have always considered you a man with nerves of steel. Like anybody sneaking up behind me like that. My dear man, I did not sneak up behind you. I merely opened the door and there you were. You could have knocked. Next time I will, perhaps. You won't ever be seeing me again, Captain. And I won't ever be seeing you again. Can't say that'll upset me any. You just pay me the rest of my money. I'll be on my way. You have checked the entire ship. I checked. Couldn't find a single thing wrong. I bet if Captain Gano walked on deck, he'd swear it was his ship. But Captain Gano will never walk the deck again, will he, Mr. Clegg? There is nothing to be afraid of now, Mr. Clegg. Your job is finished. A stinking job it was, too. Yes, that is why you were so well paid. I ain't been paid yet. Tell me, Mr. Clegg. Now that you are a comparatively rich man, where do you intend... My plans are no concern of yours. Just give me my money and I'll be oh, on... I do not have the money. What's that? Now, do not excite yourself, Mr. Clegg. You will get your money, of course, but... I want it now. Mr. Clegg, no matter where you go eventually, you will have to start from San Brejo, will you not? Yeah. Well, then, that is it. There is a Mr. Crow staying at the Los Rios Hotel. He will be expecting you. He will pay you. If I don't get my money from this Mr. Crow, your ship will be picked up before she clears Brejo Gulf. Ah, but you will be paid. What's this Mr. Crow look like? I do not have the slightest idea. I have never met Mr. Crow. If you've never met him, what makes you think he'll pay me? Please, Mr. Clay, you have nothing to worry about. I have had business dealings with Mr. Kroll, even though we have never met. He will take very good care of you. Now you had better hurry. Sam! Sam Wilton! What the devil are you doing here in Sombrero? I came by to see you, Manuel. Why you shake with your left hand? Is the bullet still in there? Oh, no, no. I stopped by Saraguro and the doctor. He took it out. It's a little stiff, but it's okay. Look, Manuel, will you give me a drink? Who'd want to shoot you, Sam? Moyendo. Moyendo? But why he want to shoot you? You have run his plantation for nearly five years. Moyendo always speak very well of you. Why, he felt like an uncle to you. Yeah, but his wife didn't uh, feel like my aunt. Oh, oh I see. 
Mugendu's a very jealous man. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Well, there are a lot of plantations that need a good foreman like you. You have nothing to worry about, Sam. <laughs> Look, man, well, I uh, have got quite a bit to worry about. Is Moyendo here in San Brejo? No, no, he's still up at the plantation. But I am in trouble and I need help, Manuel. Sure, Sam. What can I do? I gotta get back to the States. Oh, that is simple. When do you want to go? Well, on the first boat that leaves here. The Banjos leaves tonight. Good, good. I want you to put me right on board. Well, I don't need this much, Sam. You give me your passport and well, I... I don't have a passport. That's why I gave you this extra money. You can get me one, can't you? But where is your passport? Well, it's still back there at the plantation. I don't feel like going back to get it. Yes. Oyendo has very big temper. All right, Sam. I go to the office to make a call. I'll be right back. Hey, Manuel. Who's the girl? Miss Yeager. Staying here? Yeah, she's been here about a week. She's a very beautiful woman, Manuel. Yes, and Moyendo's wife is also a very beautiful woman. Sam, you appreciate too many women. You'd be much better off to appreciate just one woman. Maybe then you would not always be in trouble. Look, man, when you get me the passport, uh, don't get it under my own name. Use the name of Smith or Jones or anything but Wilton, huh? Sam, that is something you're not telling me. I'll tell you all about it when you come back. But remember, if you don't get me the passport, I'm in trouble. Understand? Uh -huh. Oh, good morning. Good morning, Manuel. Mr. Diltz would like to talk to you. Of course. Is there something wrong, Mr. Diltz? Yes, Manuel, there is. Did you sell this, whatever you call it, to my wife? Yes, it is beautiful, isn't it? Oh, I think so. Uh, my husband doesn't, though. Manuel, I have enjoyed my stay at your hotel, and I will gladly pay the bill, which I might say is very high for what your hotel has to offer. But I refuse to pay $25 for this ridiculous piece of crockery. So if you will please take it back, I will... Oh, Fred, please. I want it. I I've never seen anything quite like this before. It'll make a wonderful souvenir of our trip to South America. Oh. Please, Fred. I'm sorry, Kate. I will not pay $25 for this ridiculous-looking turtle. Why, it isn't worth... Mr. Diltz, would you be willing to pay $15 for it? No, Manuel, I wouldn't. Oh, Fred, please. Oh, very well, Kate. Oh. Well, now that that's settled, we'd like to pay our bill. We're leaving on the bunions tonight. Certainly, Mr. Crofton. Come with me. Mr. Kroll staying here? I don't know. Why do you want to see him? I take it you know Mr. Kroll. Where is he? Are you a friend of his? No way. Did a favor for him once. Mr. Kroll hasn't arrived yet. When he does, Tell him Mr. Clegg wants to see him. Are you feeling all right? I am Manuel, proprietor of the Los Rios Hotel. How do you do? We would like two rooms. Of course. How long do you intend to stay? We have passage booked on the Banos. Do you know when the Banos is leaving? It is leaving tonight. Yes. Yes. It has been a long time. 
still can't believe that you're here. I was so worried. I'm really here. Thanks to Mr. Kroll. Miss Yeager, we are leaving tonight for the United States. And I think it would be wise for your father to get some rest. He has traveled a long way and he's very tired. We have so many things to talk about, Father. Hardly know where to start. Mr. Kroll, do you know that man? I've never seen him before. He said he wanted to talk to you. His name is Clegg. Oh, yes. I'm very anxious to have a talk with Mr. Clegg. Mr. Yeager, you have some rest. I will join you later. You wish to see me, Mr. Clegg? That's right. Captain Scarface told I'm me... I'm afraid I don't know anyone by that name. You do know Captain Tregner? Yeah, I know him. Well, that's who I'm talking about. He told me you'd give me $5,000. I will, Mr. Clegg. Well, just hand it over and I'll be on my way. <laughs> I have the money in my suitcase. You are staying under Los Rios, Mr. Clegg? Till I get my money, I am. I will bring you the money to your room tonight. You certainly took your time getting back here. Well, what are you looking at me like that for? Look, uh, I haven't got time to play games. I gotta get the passport. Did you get it? Why not? You know why. You told me Moyendo shot you, but you didn't tell me that you shot Moyendo. Well, you didn't ask me who I shot. You only asked me who shot me. You must be crazy. Moyendo is one of the richest men in all South America. If they catch you, you'll spend the rest of your life in jail. Well, if I hadn't shot him, he'd have killed me. He'll be all right in a few weeks. I only shot him in the leg. You cannot stay here, Sam. Moyendo has notified every governor of every province yeah, that's that... that's what I figured. See, that's why I asked you to get the passport You and... cannot stay here, Sam. Everybody knows we are friends. The police will come here looking for you. If they find you here, Manuel will be in trouble. Mm, okay, Manuel. I'll leave in the morning. I'm sorry, Sam. I wish I could help you. Get it, Manuel. I'll leave in the morning. Is your father not going to have any dinner? He said he wasn't hungry. Is he all right? I think so. He's changed so very much. He looks so old. He has been through a great deal since you last saw him. Yes, I know. I don't quite know how to thank you for all you've done. I don't want any thanks or gratitude. I consider myself very fortunate to have been in a position to help your father. I didn't think I'd ever see him again. It's been eight years, Mr. Kroll. Sometimes I gave up hope that he was still alive. Miss Yeager, please. You shouldn't fail in the past. Your only concern should be with the future. I know. A brand will do it. Then the past and brighten the future. Excuse me. I will be right back. Yes, sir. I spent just about as much time down here in this part of the country as I have in the States. As a matter of fact, if I could have gotten some of the stake me back in the 30s, I'd have been a multimillionaire by now. Well, I don't know anything about mining or South America. This is our first trip. There's still fortunes to be made down here. The Andes is just glutted with gold. All you have to do is find it. And I'm going to do that before I die, I promise you. I'm sure you will. Oh, say, Fred. Here, here's one of my cards. If you find anybody back home that has a little money they want to invest, drop me a line. I don't know why I like this turtle so much. He looks so uncomfortable on his back. <laughs> Fifteen dollars. I'm uh, Sam Wilton. I saw you when you came in this morning. It was quite a reunion. <laughs> Miss Yeager seemed mighty pleased to see the old gentleman. Are uh, you staying... Uh... I came in here to order two drinks, not to make your acquaintance. Don't bridle, friend. It's only trying to make conversation. If you don't feel like small talk, I won't make with any. Thank you. How much do I owe you? Not a thing. It's on the house. Good 
You're a very impatient man, Mr. Keck. I will be up in your room in a few minutes. I don't like to be kept waiting, Mr. Crow. Miss Yeager, I think it would be wiser not to board the banyas together. Why? Surely you don't anticipate trouble now that we've come this far. No, no, far. no, no, not at all. But we can't be too careful. Please don't keep anything from me. I know there's something wrong. Why do you have to speak to Mr. Clegg? Believe me, there is nothing to be alarmed about. I will admit that Mr. Clegg is not one to inspire you with confidence. But Miss Yeager, in order to help your father to escape, I was forced to deal with many men even more unsavory than Mr. Clegg. Without their help, we wouldn't have gotten as far as we are now. I don't understand. Surely father's safe now. You underestimate your father's importance. He won't be safe until he sets foot on American soil. And that day is not too far off. Ladies and gentlemen, the car is here to take you to the banyos. I hope you have all enjoyed your stay at the Los Rios. And I hope you will all return to South America again. And when you do, remember, you are always welcome at De Los Rios. Thank oh, you very much. Very nice. Oh, yes, I must have. Uh, Monsieur, talk as little as possible with the other passengers. You will find that Americans are very talkative. When you bought the banyos, stay in your cabins until I arrive. Please. Driver, I would like you to come back here at 10 o'clock. Mr. Crow, I thought you were going too. I put your luggage in the back of it's the... It's all right, Manuel. I wanted my luggage to go on ahead. Come in. Did you see, Mr. Kroll, I was expecting you. If you will please put that gun away, we can get on with our little transaction. This won't interfere with our transaction. All you have to do is count out $5,000, leave it on that table, turn around and leave. It's a very simple transaction. No, Mr. Clegg, it's not as simple as that. What's complicated about it? You. Men like you cause the most trouble in the world. I despise men like you. I'm not interested in your feelings. All I want is my money. I know. Have you ever done anything in your life except for money? No. I'm not going to start now. Tell me, Clegg. You must have worked with Captain Gunner and his crew for a good many years. And many of them must have been your friends. There's no need for friends. I know. But how did it feel to kill Captain Gunner and his crew just to get some... I didn't kill them. Oh, let's not quibble about degrees of guilt. If it were not for you, those men would still be alive. You didn't come here to give me a lecture. I'm waiting for my money. Are you positive there are no survivors? Only the one you're looking at. Good. Mr. Clegg, you are not going to get any more money. In fact, you are not going to leave this room alive. You're not in a very good position to make threats like that. I'll one move out of you, Crow, and I'll keep pulling this trigger till you're so heavy you won't be able to stand up. What are you waiting for? Just wondering how much you got paid for your part in this. I was paid nothing. No? How about Captain Scarface? How much did he get? Nothing. 
This may come as a surprise to you, Crick. But many men do things merely because they believe in what they are doing. I imagine he'll get paid plenty if the Banos reaches the Panama Canal. You know more of our plans than I realized. Now maybe you'll change your mind about paying me. The money is in my inside coat pocket. Will you try to get it? Or will you permit me to? Move very slowly, Crow. Take the money out of your pocket and throw it on the bed. Spend it. I had better take care of that money, Sam. Come with me. Did you know Clegg very well? No, but he has worked out of this part for many years. He must have been in some kind of business with Crowley. I saw him talking in the arcade this afternoon. Crowley was apparently a very close friend of Mr. Yeager and his daughter. Well, I better go downstairs and call the police. Wait a minute. What did you find? Oh, nothing important, just his passport here. Look, when the police come, you gonna turn that money over to them? Of course I am. Why? Nobody knows about it except me. Do me a favor. What? Well, you ought to be able to fix it so that my picture's sitting here instead of Kroll's. Well? I'll better take care of that tomorrow. No, no, I gotta have it tonight. I'm going back to the States on the Banyos. What? Are you crazy? You said Mr. Yeager and his daughter were very good friends of Mr. Kroll. They'll know that you I'd are not... I'd be in a jam with Miss Yeager than I would with uh, Mayenda. We will cast off as soon as he comes aboard. Why didn't he come down with the old man and the girl? I do not know. Mr. Kroll? That's right. May I see your passport, please? I am Captain Tregnor. This is Mr. Perro, my first date. How do you do? Come with me, Mr. Kroll. I will show you to your cabin. Mr. Clegg got in touch with you, I suppose? Yes, he did. Did he give you much trouble? Yes, quite a bit. That is too bad. Where is Mr. Clegg now? I imagine he's in the morgue at San Breo. That is a very safe place for Mr. Clegg to be. That is Mr. Yeager's cabin. This is the girl's. And this is yours. As soon as we get underway, come to my cabin. We have many things to discuss. Oh, Captain Tregner, I haven't had any sleep since I arrived in San Breo. I wonder if you'd mind if I... Oh, certainly, certainly. Sleep as late as you like. We will have plenty of time to talk tomorrow. Sleep well, Mr. Crow. Thank you. Oh. 
Has Jaeger become at all suspicious? No, no. Not at all. Good. Over there is one of the prettiest little towns you ever laid your eyes on. Yippee Yappa. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yippee Yappa. That's the name of the town. Oh. Mr. Crofton. Have you noticed that this is an entirely different crew than was aboard the Banos when we came down to South America? There's nothing unusual about that. Most of these freighter crews are made up of drifters. Well, what about Captain Gano? He didn't impress me as being a drifter. In fact, he told my wife and I to enjoy our vacation and he'd see us on our return trip. Uh, Fred, will you come here a minute, dear, please? Uh, you too, Mr. Crofton. Good morning, Mr. Dillis. Mr. Crofton. Good morning, Good morning Captain. Morning. What is it, dear? Something very strange, Fred. Um, this is the same cabin we had before, isn't it? Yes, of course. You know it is. Why? Have you noticed anything different about it? No. Well, when we came down to South America, the porthole in this cabin was on that side of the door. Look, right, right about here. Oh, that's ridiculous, Kate. They don't go around changing the portholes. No, 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 dear. I tell you, I am positive. Now, listen, Fred, if you just try to remember, when we'd go to bed, it was usually very warm, and we always left the porthole open. Then, during the night, it always turned cold, and I had to get up and close it. By golly, Kate, you're right. The wind used to whistle through that porthole right across my back. Yes. And I always had to get up and close it. Are you both sure about this? There's just no doubt about it. That's where it was, right there. I don't understand this, Mr. Crofton. Neither do I. Father. Father, are you up? Oh, Captain, could you tell me which cabin is Mr. Kroll's? Mr. Kroll is staying in the cabin next to yours, Miss Yeager. I was told this was Mr. Kroll's cabin. Please let me go. I can't, I can't. I've got to talk to you. Now, please trust me, Miss Yeager. What do you want to talk to me about? I don't exactly know. Mr. Kroll is dead. He was killed in the Las Rios Hotel by a man by the name of Clegg. I, I don't know why he was killed, but I do know that you and your father are in trouble. When I boarded the ship, Captain Tregner asked me if your father was a little suspicious. Miss Yeager, but you've got to listen to me. Did you talk to Mr. Kroll yet? No, he is very busy right now. What do you mean? Oh, do not let it worry you. Bring Mr. Yeager to my cabin. Yes, but don't you think you better talk to Mr. Kroll before you talk to Mr. Mr. Yeager? Mr. Perro, I said, bring Mr. Yeager to my cabin. Mr. Yeager, wake up. <laughs> what do you want? What, what are you doing in my cabin? Get dressed. Captain Tregner wants to see you. What for? I don't know, but Captain doesn't like to be kept waiting. Thank you, Mr. Barrow. Wish to see me, Captain Trainer? Yes. Do you know what this is? Well, yes, that's quite obvious. This is a map of the Panama Canal. That is right. You are looking at a map of the most valuable little strip of water in the entire world. 
Do you have any idea how many more miles the Banyos would have to travel from Guayaquil to New York if it were not for this little strip of water? No, I haven't. 7,405 miles. And it saves ships going from Alaska and the west coast of the United States to the east coast 7,873 miles. I'm quite aware of the great value of the Panama Canal. So but... is the United States. That is the reason why this man-made ditch is the most carefully guarded place on the face of the earth. I dare say what you say is true, but why are you telling me this? I would like to have your opinion. Do you think it is possible to destroy the usefulness of the Panama Canal? I really wouldn't know. Oh, Captain Tregner, surely you haven't gotten me out of bed to discuss the Panama Canal. Yes, I have, Doctor. Why are you calling me Doctor? If you will please come with me, Dr. Yeager, I will show you something I am sure you will find very interesting. Please, Miss Yeager, you must believe me. I didn't kill Kroll. I needed a passport in a hurry. Kroll didn't have any further use for his, so I... I won't listen to any more of your lies. If you don't let me leave this cabin immediately, I'll call for the captain. Miss Yeager, that would be a very big mistake. Here, take this. Now, will you believe me? Now, do you know any reason why Clegg would kill Kroll? Oh, yes, I... I do, but oh, I don't know what to do. If only I could talk to my father. All right. Go get him. I'll stay here. Oh, uh, would you mind leaving that with me? Thanks. Coffee and cocoa. Coffee for the American adults and cocoa for their children. The Americans do not allow their children to drink coffee, Dr. Yeager. You are making a great mistake, Captain. I am no doctor. Of course you are not. You would not know any more about setting a broken leg than I would. Uh, why do you... Please. I know who you are, Dr. Yeager. Why did you bring me down here? to show you something you understand a great deal about. This is a little more on your line, is it not, Dr. Yeager? Now do you know why we went to so much trouble to get you here, Doctor? You intend to destroy the Panama Canal? Not me, Doctor. You. No. Come, Doctor, I can wait no longer. I assure you, you will gain nothing by refusing. I must have your answer. I have given my answer. You are a very foolish man, Dr. Yeager. You are sacrificing your daughter's life for no purpose. Perhaps if we spoke to your daughter... Her answer would be the same. My daughter grew up in Germany. She's very familiar with death. She was only a child when Hitler came to power. 
But when the communists I came... am not interested in listening to your daughter's biography. I'm merely trying to tell you that my daughter is not so highly attached to her life that she would not willingly sacrifice it to save. I have tried to explain, Doctor, by sacrificing your daughter's life, you save nothing. Even if you refuse to cooperate, we will still carry out our plan successfully. <laughs> I doubt that very much, Captain. The atom bomb in the hold of this ship cannot be detonated by striking a match. This is a very delicate, complex mechanism. I know that, Doctor. That is why you are here, to serve as the match. Possibly you do not know that only a handful of scientists worked on the project which developed that bomb. Only one of these yes. men would know how to. Did Dr. Malov work on this project with you? Yes, yes, he did. As I said before, we are prepared for any eventuality. If you refuse, Dr. Malov will take your place. But Dr. Malov is in Russia. No, he also has taken a very long trip recently. If you refuse, we will contact him and he will be on board the Banos in a matter of hours. So you see, Doctor, the canal will be destroyed, regardless of your decision. But your daughter is so young and so very beautiful. It would be a pity to sacrifice her life for no purpose. I must have your answer. Can I speak to my daughter alone? Just a few minutes? Very well, Doctor. Go to your daughter. Here's it. Where have you been? I've been so worried about you. Talking to the captain. Come, Ilse, sit down. I must talk to you. Father, Mr. Kroll has been killed. What? There's a man in the next cabin using his passport. His name is Sam Wilton. He said that we were in great danger and he must talk to you. I must talk to Mr. Wilton. I'll go with you. No, Ilse. I must talk to Mr. Wilton alone. Now, you, you go to your cabin. I'll meet you there later. Why can't I go, too? Please, Ilse. I have no time to waste. Mr. Wilton? Yeah, Sam Wilton. Come in. Now, look, Mr. Yeager. I'm in a bind. Any minute, there's going to be a knock on that door, and Captain Tregner and I are going to have a chat, and I'm not going to know what to say because he thinks I'm cruel. Now, your daughter seems to think that Kroll was a very good friend of yours. I have found out Kroll was not a friend of ours. Who was Kroll? Obviously, a communist agent. This Captain Tregner, he's a communist, too. Uh, well, where do you fit into all this? Mr. Wilton, there is an atomic bomb in the hold of this ship. That is why I am here. The purpose of this voyage is to destroy the Panama Canal. Oh, I thought I had news for you. Now, look, Mr. Yeager. You've got to tell me all about yourself and Kroll. Now, give it to me fast. But I, I don't know where to begin. Well, where did you meet Kroll? I met him in Sverdlovsk three months ago. Sverdlovsk? That's in Russia, isn't it? Yes, that's in the Ural Mountains. I escaped from there. Or at least I thought I had escaped from there two weeks ago with the help of Kroll. Uh, was your daughter in Russia with you? No, no. I met Ilse in San Brejo. It was the first time in eight years that I've seen her. Were uh, you in a Russian prison camp? I was a prisoner, but I wasn't actually in a camp. There is a large atomic plant in Sverdlovsk, and I was uh, considered one of the directors of the plant. You see, I'm a very sick man, Mr. Wilton, and when this Kroll came to me, and, and he said he could help me to escape, and, and that I could see my daughter once more, you know, Mr. Wilton, scientists can be very stupid sometimes. As, as I look back now, that whole escape was all so simple. I 
should have realized. I, I should have known it. Where is your father, Miss Yeager? I don't know. It is apparent that you have lied to me from the beginning, Mr. Kroll. <coughs> Captain Trainer is coming. Mr. Wilton, my daughter's life is in your hands. I thought you wished to speak to your daughter, Dr. Yeager. Uh, I have already spoken to my daughter, Captain. But I also had a few things to say to Mr. Kroll. Then perhaps you have reached your decision? Yes, Captain, as you say. I have nothing to gain by refusing. Ah. Father! Mr. Kroll, you had better take Miss Yeager into her cabin. Where are you going? Well, you haven't anything to worry about, Miss Yeager. Captain Tregner and your father have something they want to talk over. Ilse, you go with Mr. Kroll. He'll explain everything to you. been through the Panama Canal, Mr. Kroll? Oh, no. No, I haven't. Oh, it's too bad you were leaving us at Balboa. The canal is worth seeing. You know, Mr. Kroll, men and countries have been talking about destroying the Panama Canal ever since it was first built. But nobody has ever been able to figure out a way to do it. Now it will be done. Captain, are you uh, sure your crew can be trusted? Positive. Every man under my command is aboard the ship because he wants to be here. You do not distrust men who volunteer for a certain death, Mr. Crow. How many Americans believe enough in their country to volunteer for a suicidal mission such as this? Very few, Mr. Crow. Very few. Americans set much too high a value on human life, especially their own. Mr. Crow. Would you be willing to sacrifice your life for the cause you believe in? Yes, I would. The Banyas will arrive at Balboa about 10 o'clock Tuesday morning. And there, Mr. Kroll, is where the Banyas will have to pass the big test. Because at Balboa, they search the ship from stem to stern. But I doubt very much if they will find anything. Once past Balboa, it is merely a matter of hours. Through the Lux at Miraflores. Through the locks at Pedro Miguel, then Gatun Lake, and then the key to the entire canal, Gatun Lux, Gatun Dam, and the most powerful hydroelectric station in the world. Come in. Is that from the tower, Captain? Yes, there has been a slight change in the plans. What do you mean? We will meet the Tara off Cabos Corrientes as we had planned if Dr. Yeager had refused. But instead of Dr. Malov coming aboard the Banos with us, you, Mr. Kroll, and Miss Yeager will go aboard the Tara. What time do we meet the Tara, Captain? 11 o'clock tomorrow night. Something troubling you, Mr. Kroll? Oh, no, no, not really. I just don't like changing plans. Well, sometimes the change in plans is necessary. And of course, you and Miss Yeager will be safely aboard the Tara, whereas we on the Banos, we, well... May the last trip of Captain Tregnor on the Banos be their most successful. <laughs> Please, Miss Yeager, stay in your cabin. I can't. You have to tell me where my father is. Uh, please go to bed, Miss Yeager. I assure you that everything will be all right. You've got to stay in your cabin. I'll see you in the morning.
Oh, uh, that won't be necessary, Pearl. Captain's order, Mr. Carl. He doesn't want Miss Yeager to talk with the rest of the passengers. Oh, yes, yes, I guess the captain's right. Uh, good night. Uh, good night, Mr. Carl. Fellow passengers, I'd like it very much better if you knocked before you came into my cabin. Sorry. Do either of you men know how to run a ship's radio? Yeah, I can handle one. Why? Unless we make contact with another ship, none of us will be alive when we reach Balboa. <laughs> Do you think they'd mind if I picked a few bananas? Yes, I think they would, Kate. Uh, why? Fred, are you going to answer me? What did you say, Kate? <laughs> Nothing, dear. Nothing at all. What in the world is the matter with you this morning? Why, you're acting well, Here as... comes Mr. Crofton. Well, what's so earth-shaking about that? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, morning. <laughs> say, do you think they'd mind if I picked a few bananas? I don't think so, Mrs. Dills. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Could you do something about cheering my husband up? My goodness, he's been in the dumps all morning. I'll try, Mrs. Dills. Haven't you told your wife anything? I didn't think there was any point in having her worry, too. I don't suppose you had any luck sending out a message. I went to the radio room a half a dozen times last night. They keep it locked. Where's Wilton? I think he's in the captain's cabin. Have you seen the girl? No. One of the crew took some food to her cabin a little while ago. What are we going to do, Mr. Crofton? I don't know, Fred. <gasps> oh, Fred. Oh, you almost made me drop this. Well, it wouldn't be much loss if I had. We'll be in our cabin, Kate. Would you mind if I picked a few of the bananas? Uh, I'll only take the very ripe ones. Uh. Why don't you take off your coat? At midday, this cabin is hotter than the boiler room. Mr. Kroll, this is a new suit. You bought it at Sombreo. That's right. What about it? Nothing. But I would think you would have had too much on your mind while in Sombreo to bother buying a new suit. You were only in Sombreo one day, Mr. Kroll. Needed a new suit. Why? Mr. Perro worries about everything, Mr. Kroll. So I see. I bought the suit because I sent my luggage down ahead with the Jaegers. Left me only one suit, the one I was wearing. After seeing Clegg, the uh, suit wasn't very presentable. Had a round hole right here in the sleeve. I figured it might make the customs men rather curious. Does that ease your mind, Mr. Perro? Mr. Crofton, if Look, we... Look, Fred, how many times do I have to tell you to call me Everett? You know, I bet you never call anybody by the first name unless they were a blood relative. I'm not quite that bad, Everett. I was thinking if we... That was Kate. What 
has happened to her? She's all right, Fred. She probably fainted from the heat. Mr. Dills, your wife's been bitten by a snake. Probably a fair delance. Crofton, give me a hand. Let's get her to the cabin. Mr. Crow. Let Mr. Diltz and Mr. Crofton take her to her cabin. I think it would be wiser if you remain here and find the fair de lance. You two men there, you could also help to look. Is it fair to launch, Mr. Crow? Yes. Where do you go now? To see if there's anything I can do for Mrs. Diltz. What happens to Mrs. Diltz does not concern us. Besides, we have not yet finished eating. Mr. Perro, please roll up Mr. Kroll's sleeve. I would like to see how badly he was hurt by Mr. Clegg. I'll roll up my own sleeve. Remove the bondage, please. You heal very quickly, Mr. Kroll. Look, Captain, no more games. Let's have it. What's on your mind? A considerable number of things. It is very odd that you knew Mrs. Dills was bitten by a fair de lance just from the marks on her face, even before you ever saw the snake. And I noticed that you handled and carried a machete just like a native. Other things bother me, too. Mr. Perro, have you noticed that Mr. Kroll is very brown? Perhaps he has spent more time in South America than he has in Russia. Who are you, Mr. Kroll? If I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Tell me anyway. <laughs> Who are you, and why did you come aboard the Banos? My name is Sam Wilton. A good American name. What happened to Mr. Craw? <laughs> Mr. Farrow has just asked you a question. Clegg killed him. Is Clegg still alive? Why don't you pull the string on that thing and get this over with? I intend to, Mr. Wilton, but not until I've asked you a few more questions. I can ask all the questions you want, but you won't get any answers. Captain, Mrs. Dilts is dying. We've got to get a doctor. Oh, that would be a waste of time, Mr. Crofton. Mrs. Dilts will be dead within an hour. Mr. Kroll tells me that a fair de lance is... I don't care what Mr. Kroll tells you. I insist that you radio Buena Ventura and have a doctor flown out. He can be here in yes, a... Yes, but I am the captain of the Banos, Mr. Crofton, and I'm not sending for a doctor. Now, please, go back to your cabin. Mr. Wilton, are you prepared to give your answers now? There's no use doing that any longer, Fred. She's dead, isn't she? Where are you going, Fred? If the captain had sent for a doctor, Kate would still be alive. I know, Fred, but you've got to stay here. No, I'm going to see the captain. Look, Fred, I know how you feel. Let me go. Figure something Let out. me go. Look, Fred. And now, Mr. Wilton, what happened to Mr. Clegg? My wife is dead. I'm very sorry to hear that, Mr. Dills, but there's nothing I can do about it. My wife is dead. You killed her! You did it! You wouldn't send for the doctor! Take every man and 
search this ship from stem to stern. Bring that man back here. Oh, hands! found him by now, I bet he's not still aboard ship. You know what, they're still looking for him. I think I'll go down and see if I can get into that radio room. Fred, if you... Fred. Back to your cabin, Mr. Crofton. Have you found him yet? No, but we will. Please go back to your cabin, Mr. Crofton. When are we going to take care of Crofton and Diltz? We will take care of them after we have found Wilton. this way. They'll find you, Mr. Wilton. Get out. My wife is dead, Mr. Wilton. Goodbye, Mr. Wilton. I wish you and Mr. Crofton luck. much of our time. But he will waste no more, Captain. We better radio the Tara not to wait for Mr. Crow. Not yet. We still may have need for Dr. Marloff. Why, Captain? You are not very bright, Mr. Barrow. I will have to have a talk with Dr. Yeager before we radio the Tara. Would you like to have some more food sent down, Dr. Yeager? Daughter, all right. Well, naturally, she is worried about you, but of course, only you can save her life. Uh, could I... Could I speak to Mr. Crawl? You mean Mr. Wilton? Yes, we have found out all about your friend, Mr. Wilton. He is dead, Doctor. He tried to escape. And so, if you will still agree to serve as the match, Mr. Perro, my first mate, will leave the Banyos at Balboa with your daughter. And he will release her the moment he receives word that the bombing has taken place. If you refuse, you and your daughter will be killed, and Dr. Maloff will take your place. 
Well, Dr. Jaeger. Yes. A very wise decision, Dr. Jaeger. You will not see me again until we reach Gatun Lux. Then I will join you and we will... You and I will be blown to eternity together. in the radio the Tara. You men, start moving the cargo. Are you sure Jäger will still go through with it? Positive. Well, I'm going to take care of the passengers and the girl. In the morning, in the morning. We have done enough for one day. Mr. Perrow, I'm going to turn in. You will stay here until the cargo is moved, then take over on the bridge. said I handled a machete like a native. Where's your gun? In a whisper. Under the pillow. It's a very handy place for a gun. Take me to Dr. Jaeger. That would be very difficult to do. Take me to him anyway. Get up. To see Dr. Yeager, you have a lot of work to do. There is no riddles, Captain. Where is he? Behind the cargo. There is a section built into the side of the ship. Okay. You know exactly where it is. Start moving the cargo, Captain. You are being very foolish, Mr. Wilton. We'll be in Balboa before I could possibly remove all this. Get started. What happened to the original, Banyas? It was torpedoed and sunk. A week before you came aboard at San Brejo. How come no one knew about the sinking? That was Mr. Clegg's contribution. He was the radio operator aboard the original Banos. So no message was sent, and there were no survivors to tell about it except Mr. Clegg. You made this ship look enough like the Banos to get it through the Panama Canal without suspicion, huh? That is right. Quite a plan, Captain. Quite a plan. Out of the woods. 
Come on. Won't be long now. Who'd you contact? I hit the jackpot. It'll be all right if we want to shore now, Commander. Certainly, Wilton. There's nothing more for you to do. Thank you. 